Hello and welcome to Camp Unwrap. Great to see you, Andy and Tom. Hello, Rich. Good to see you. And today we welcome Anthony. He's an absolute favourite of XUK. Welcome, Anthony. Hello, hello. How's it going? Yeah, very good, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. Very good. Yeah. Good. Well, it's great, great to see you and thanks for coming, coming to talk to us. Absolutely, not a problem. It's nice to nice to be back. I was hoping to be back this year, but uh, this will have to be. Yeah, absolutely. It's, a, so. it's a, 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 a maybe a non-adequate replacement for mm. six weeks of camp in the summer. Um, yeah. So, Andy, what have we got on today? Great. So today, Anthony, we're just going to be talking to you a little bit about your history at XUK, um, and I suppose it's a good place to start off with. What were the reasons? For applying to XUK in the first place? Um, well, I was, uh, I finished university and had sort of had a couple of jobs working in uh, a few different schools, um, coaching and things like that, and doing a bit of caretaking, maintenance kind of thing. Uh, I went traveling for a while and then I came back to the UK, was working manufacturing cars for sort of a year and it was coming up to the summer holidays um and the lease on my flat was running out so i was kind of looking for jobs and, and not really knowing where i was going to live either and xuk kind of popped up um and it just sounded perfect really kind of just playing sport doing crazy activities residential so accommodation wasn't going to be an issue over the summer um and it just sounded like a really really good uh good job so I checked out the website and it looked like a nice company as well, not just a good job. Uh, and it seemed like a very close knit kind of company. So yeah, I sort of just applied and, and managed to get myself an interview. So, Do you remember your interview, Anthony? Cause I, I remember it very clearly. I remember you there. Yeah, I, I do. I do too. Um, I think I was, I was one of the first people that turned up at the interview. I think there was me and maybe were one other, there was a girl there at the time as well. I don't remember her name, but uh, I remember some of the staff that were there. I remember you and, and Nick and then Sarah, Lex um, and a few others. Yeah, I, I remember it pretty well as well. Yeah, we, we did the spaghetti and the marshmallow towers. Um, yeah, ran activities. It was a really fun day, actually. I wasn't sure what I was going to, what I was expecting. Um, but I just kind of figured, just relax and be myself. And I remember building the spaghetti towers with marshmallows as well. But my groups fell over as the time ran out. So, mm. like, you had to build the tallest tower you could. And ours was the height of, like, one marshmallow. So, yeah, then I got the job, really. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that was... Um, the one thing I remember sort of going into the interview with in, in my head like that, as I say, it was not necessarily to do the best things or make the best how or whatever, but just kind of be myself and have fun because um, if you're trying to put on a facade of any sort, so if you're trying to be something that you're naturally not, and then if you get a contract for the six weeks, you're, you're not going to last. You're, the facade's going to break. You're going to stress yourself out and things. And I just thought, sort of it works both ways if I go in I'm myself and they don't like me then that's fair or if they like me but I don't like them then I still don't have to take the job if I'm offered it so just the more natural I was the more likely I would actually survive the job as well which uh, looking back at it now survive is definitely not the right word but going <laughs> into it that was kind of kind of what I was thinking so yeah it was really good fun definitely the most fun interview I've ever had so uh, that's great. And obviously, since you've started, you've become a big name at camp. Lots of people know you. Lots of people associate camp with you as well, because you bring that sort of that energy to camp, which I know myself, I know Tom, we appreciated, you know, from our first years in um, you know, when we first started. So do you think, Anthony, that over the first the, the two years that you were that you you changed? How did how did XUK help you as a person? Um, Oh, it, it changed, it changed me massively for sure. I think, um, going into it sort of the way I, my confidence in terms of standing in front of people and 
sort of like confidence in myself, not just sort of my ability to kind of stand up and be and sort of talk to a room of people, but to be myself around camp and be able to just give as much energy as I want and see and see positive reactions from staff members and kids and sort of all ages kind of it just yeah it sort of really helped my confidence going into other things and sort of realizing that if I'm not necessarily good at something else it, it's I know what I am good at and I can sort of just go with it and I can find ways through things um, I remember in my first year which um, my first year we, I was running an evening activity and it got rained off and we got put into Broadway and suddenly everything changed and my whole plan had gone out the window um, and I had no idea what to do uh, and I, I essentially I just froze on the spot really uh, and Ellie was activity manager and she sort of pulled me over to one side and Jacob and Harriet just jumped in straight away um, and they just started they just pulled together quizzes and activities all for the kids to do inside and it was just mind-blowing to me to see how quickly they reacted and did that and then there was a moment in the following year where something very similar happened um, but it, it wasn't a rained off activity or something but something changed and, and I saw myself and I was the one that jumped in and did that exact same thing and just learning from other people you sort of yeah I've just sort of grown in how quickly I adapt to situations and things so yeah fantastic oh, amazing it's great to hear it's great to hear your people who've inspired you as well in your in your early days as a staff member uh, it's good um so obviously you, you talk about color war as standing out for you um, and me and Tom we ran color war last year um, so was it difficult for you seeing images online and on social media? Um, and was it hard sort of missing out that year? Uh, yeah, absolutely. It was, it's sort of, it's very mixed emotions really, because I see it and it, it brings up all of the emotions from when I was there. So I'm sort of filled with, um, the excitement through seeing the pictures and, um, yeah, but then obviously there's a massive feeling of, of missing out and, and wishing, wishing that I could be there to be involved in it and just kind of as a team leader or as a, a colour war leader, again, rather than not necessarily organising it, but just being able to just go out and just have fun and, and get involved in all the activities. So yeah, the thing that I found out was just the sheer amount of planning that has to go into it. As in, you know, we've done colour war before, just leading a group. But I remember in the days leading up to it, myself and Andy and the others, it was like a sleep at sort of three in the morning and then you'd be up at half five the next day or like, you know, two hours later to to get the next stage of, of planning to get going and getting it set up. And it's really eye-opening to see just how much has to go into one of those big days on camp. Yeah. And did you, did you, feel, um, did you feel like you enjoyed it more when you were leading a team? Or did you, was the sense of uh, achievement bigger having planned it all and, and seeing it all come together? For me, it was definitely the planning of it and seeing it come together. Because um, the year we did it, we had all of the relay, every single part of it on Augusta rather than all over site. Um, almost like a more traditional relay, it's just a lap of the field. But it meant that everyone finished at the same time and every member of staff and every camper was in the same spot at the end. And there was like music on, there was a slip and slide and people were just having such a good time. And it was at that moment, I think me and Andy just sort of looked over everything that was going on and looked at each other and we were like, yeah, nailed this. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing, yeah, no, I'd, yeah, I'd agree with you, Tom. Having put that time in and all that planning and then seeing the outcome and seeing kids enjoying it, everything running relatively smoothly or, or as smoothly as Colour War can go. Um, it was just incredible to see, that, to see that big finale at the end, like you say, Tom. Amazing. Yeah, I remember during the Colour War day when I, we organised it the year before I was, yeah, two years ago, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and I remember walking around with the walkie-talkies on the day and... I loved it, but I remember I was so much more stressed out than I was 
when I was just leading a group because as I say with timings and making sure the groups were moving at the correct pace without sort of being totalitarian about it I suppose um, without sort of taking away any of the fun um, yeah I think that was after having put in so much effort with the planning I kind of just I was a bit caught up in my own head about trying to make it run smoothly so but yeah, no. yeah. Um, with a with an event or an activity of that size it's kind of inevitable that things are sort of going to go wrong but it's just up to you to adapt and deal with it and just to make sure that everything's running in a way that people are still enjoying themselves you know if, if a group do need extra time maybe doing one activity they're a little bit behind the rest um and it, it's sort of it's a good idea just to try and make sure that people are still enjoying themselves and it's not too like you know restricted um, yeah yeah. Rich, how would you say you found a day like Color War where you're mm. able to maybe take a walk around camp and see all of the kids mixing in groups they wouldn't be? And because it's all of the people on site doing one day rather than being split off, some on a trip, some doing this, that, and the other, it must feel like quite special for you to be able to see everyone just getting on so well. Yeah, it's very special. It's a little bit like on a, a, a Sunday night when everyone is at the same place. Um, there's activities going, all the staff are there, all the new campers are there, and everyone's laughing, smiling, joking, enjoying it, looking forward to the finale. And it's, it's very, very, very special. Um, but being, being me and being the person who's in charge of the, 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 the big picture of things, I've always got half a mind on, is it going to end on time? How are we going? You know, Anthony, you sure we're going to finish at four o'clock because we need to get to X, Y, and Z. And, you know, always trying to think about the next thing as well. Um, but watching everyone have fun and just letting go is, is very, very, very special. So, Anthony, we talked a little bit about it already, but perhaps you can explain to us what exactly are the reasons for you wanting to come back this year? So you missed out in... 2019 you're busy and now this year you've um, you've reapplied or were going to come back this year so what were the reasons behind that yeah um i think sort of the point when i was uh taking the year out um a lot of things were sort of were changing around where i moved to sweden uh after my second year and so then no after my second year yeah third year and then I took a year out um, a lot of things here were sort of changing with my job and um, so my available time was changed and the things that I was planning to do sort of changed um, but then I mean a massive part of it was was sort of seeing everything on the so on social media and just kind of bringing back all of the the positive memories of it and kind of just I, I realized I started seeing things that I'd go sort of into town and I would see in a, in a shop, I would see sort of, I don't know, a little game or something. And I'd go, like, oh, that would be awesome at camp. Or, and I'd sort of see something else. Or I've been working at a school. And so I'd see the kids playing a certain game out in the playground. And I'd be like, oh, if you took that and then you added this and this and you could sort of change. And I just realized I was just planning large scale activities in my head. And I was like, there's, there's something here that, that means I'm not, it's not out of my system if you know what i mean it's which i'm not sure it ever can be really i think it's uh i was just like yeah i need to just i need to head back and 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 go again how about um, how about you guys you you guys haven't taken haven't taken a year or anything like that so how have you've just kind of kept rolling with enjoying it year on year and still going back for me it's been like such a staple part of my summer for the last few years um, as in I finished a year in school and then at uni and you've got all these plans you want to travel and meet these people but the only part that I always know is going to happen was camp and you just end up planning your whole summer around it it just becomes it's like that is summer it's not thinking like oh, I need to fit that in that's like the core part of it and everything has to go around that so yeah I think just becoming so used to doing it um made a difference for me personally what about you andy yeah i agree uh, so you get all of the emotions and the fun and the memories and the friends that you make year on year 
when it comes back round to reapplying, it's sort of a no brainer for me. You know, I'm like, I, I remember the memories I've had, the friends, you know, we've talked a lot about it, the friends that you make and the relationships that you make at camp. It comes back round to deciding how you're going to be spending your summer. And to me, there's not really been a question. If I can, then I'll be at camp again. I think when, awesome. you, when, when you've done two or three years and you've also taken a bit more responsibility, whether that's running Colour War or, 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 or being in charge of the lake or, or being the activity manager, you know that when you come back to camp the next year, whatever you're doing, you are a vital part of the team and you're going to have an influence and you're important and everyone is important on on the team and you know that you're part of that so it's hard to give that up it's hard to give up feeling wanted and being important and being a vital part of something so special which we we all do together we all love together yeah and I, I think that is one of the things that was definitely so special about camp as well um rich in, in all of the staff meetings as well as during the activities and things um there's always just there's such a everyone each staff member is, is made to feel valued and, and important for what they're doing and it's not sort of oh you've been here longer so you know you're sort of you're more important than anybody else it's it's just everyone's putting in the effort and everyone is what makes makes the whole system work would you have any, any advice that you'd give maybe a prospective member of staff? Uh, I would say just be yourself. As I said uh, earlier, just by just being yourself, then you're not having to try and put up any kind of front and then you're going you're gonna to feel less tired throughout the whole thing, I think. Um, just know, know your limits, push your limits. I think for me anyway, I, I always end up coming home from camp fitter than I, than I went to camp. Uh, I think I, I sort of try and run nonstop for six weeks. Running, jumping and shouting is essentially what I do. So maybe if, if I'm there, don't feel too intimidated um, <laughs> and just know that I'm slightly crazy. Um, yeah, but just, just have fun and remember that it's for the kids and kids are incredibly perceptive. Uh, so if you're having fun they will pick up on that energy whereas if you're not or you're trying to force it they they will pick up on that and they will give it back to you sort of twice fold i guess get to know people and they'll all support you yeah so one piece of advice is turning into a whole <laughs> checklist but... no that's spot on um and i think it's a surprise if anthony has made it to week two and his voice isn't already quite hoarse or do you have anything else you'd like to ask rich or tom i've got a question Go for which it. country in the world has got the most islands country greece it's not greece is it is it sweden it is indeed Sweden. It's, is it? No way. Yeah. I, I was be... thinking. I know. I know Fiji has over three hundred. I don't know. I don't know how many Sweden has. That's probably really bad. Oh, it's mental. It's like a massive number. But yeah. Wow. wow. There you go. Every day's a school day. Yeah. Mr. Stead. Sorry. Carry on. <laughs> Well, that's great, though. It's been it's been amazing speaking to you, Anthony, and just very interesting hearing your ideas, your thoughts, and your perspectives, experiences, just everything. It's been a pleasure to speak to you. So thank you very much. It's been amazing to see you guys and, and have a chat, too. So thank you very much. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all in person in 2021. Well, that was amazing. A really nice insight from Anthony there. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we all know him and what he's like at camp and that energy that he brings real positive guy who i think gave quite an interesting look over how he views camp and his experiences of it yeah he's such an amazing guy I, I, it's fascinating when he he talks about himself as intimidating um there's no one less intimidating than anthony he's a positive wonderful guy who has grown in confidence in the years that we've known him and he brings so much to camp um, and really really hope that we we see him in 2021. Yeah, I couldn't agree more, Rich. 
So we'll draw the episode to a close. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to stay safe and we'll see you soon.